Coming up on this week's news, the courts get tough on substandard electrical installations as a fake NIC EIC spark is convicted in Chester and a major builder is ordered to pay £5 million for a botched job at a cancer centre in Leeds. Renault announces that its cars will soon power your home and we check out the world's smallest light fitting. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with Scarmy. Whether you're listening in the van on site or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. A rogue trader who carried out botched electrical work in Chester and then harassed customers for payment is to be sentenced next month. 33-year-old Jake Hughes of York was prosecuted by Cheshire West and Chester Council for seven consumer protection offences. Hughes pleaded guilty at Chester Crown Court of falsely advertising himself as a qualified electrician and a member of the NIC EIC. Hughes's work was so bad it often had to be completely removed and started again from scratch. As well as substandard electrical work, he also attempted building work, which fell so far short of compliance with any structural design that it too had to be removed. In another offence, he aggressively demanded payment from a female client by bombarding her with texts and emails, knowing she'd been admitted to hospital with a heart problem. The offences took place between August 2021 and March 2022. Hughes will now be sentenced at a hearing on February the 3rd at Chester Crown Court. In another case about substandard work, a judge has ordered building giant Lendlease to pay £5 million to a cancer centre in compensation for an inadequate electrical installation. The project at the oncology building at St James's University Hospital in Leeds included highly complex electrical and fire safety installations. The case focused on the lack of compartmentalisation for the substation and electrical plant in the basement. This increased the risks from a fire considerably. The whole of the plant room was, in effect, a single fire compartment. This meant that a fault or a blaze could take out both the primary and secondary power supplies and shut down operating theatres, the intensive care unit and the radiotherapy and chemotherapy units. The decision settles the long-running dispute which has rumbled on since 2017. In electrical news this week, French car maker Renault has announced that it's on track to make all its electric cars with bi-directional power by the end of the decade. This means the Renault owners could, for instance, charge their cars with solar power during the day and take it back in the evening. The company says the high efficiency charger will reduce energy losses by 30% and recharge the vehicle's battery faster. The charger has a capacity of up to 22 kilowatts in three-phase mode, allowing for fast charging of the vehicle while ensuring the durability of the battery. In the UK, with news that will make EV owners as happy as a kid with candy floss, it's been announced that the EV charging network grew by almost a third last year. Last year saw the installation of a record 9,000 public chargers, taking the total to 37,000. 2022 also saw electric vehicles overtake diesel for the very first time to become the second most popular engine after petrol. And the news is even better for rapid chargers, which increased by 80%. The latest EV charger to hit the market ships this week. The Clearline EV from Viridian Solar is the first product to emerge from its collaboration with EO Charging. The Clearline is a compact 7 kilowatt wall mounted socketed unit with built in solar power matching. It's aimed at the new home market as it's expected that they'll increasingly have solar PV panels and EV charging as standard. In product news this week, the big story is the unveiling by Schneider Electric of a complete home energy package. The company has brought together a home battery a high power solar inverter, a smart electrical panel, an EV charger and a range of connected sockets and switches, all controlled by a single app. Schneider says the system allows homeowners to see all their power use in real time and control how it operates. They can seamlessly switch between power sources such as solar, home batteries or the grid to keep costs down. The firm claims to be the first to bring all its kit together in this way. The UK's top supplier of cable management kit, Marshall Tuflex, has announced that it's now stocking metal and PVC cable tray, as well as its popular wire basket range. The trays, of course, enable the safe and simple routing of both power and data cables. The metal cable tray is available in light, medium and heavy profiles and has a pre-galvanised finish. The product is fast fixed. You simply connect and bolt the units together without the need for any separate couplers. The range also includes an adjustable riser, allowing for angles between 0 to 90 degrees to be formed to the exact height 
rate and angle required. The PVC cable tray range is suitable for harsh outdoor environments where a non-corrosive solution is required, such as for water treatment plants, chemical and mining facilities, as well as for shorefront areas. They're available in five different sizes up to 400 millimeters wide. The tray is also corrosion free and 100% recyclable. The company is of course also able to supply other base or products, including those that are not part of the standard range. You may also want to have a look at our most recent CPD made in association with Marshall Tuflex on the subject of dado trunking. I've popped a link to the product and the CPD in the show notes. A smart junction box which promises to make your lighting intelligent has been unveiled by all lead. You just wire it up the way you would a normal box. It's called the Smart E Smart System, which we think is the best name we've heard for an electrical product this year. It allows you to keep all the existing light switches while bringing sophisticated control for the homeowner. It connects to the company's IQ platform and even fits through a standard spotlight hole. It can be programmed from the light switch or by asking a smart home hub system like Alexa to do the hard work for you. Finally, and also in lighting, we welcome the world's tiniest light fitting. The Nick from Minimus Lighting is said to be the world's smallest recessed directional luminaire. It measures a mere 21 mil by 21 mil with an aperture of just two millimeters by nine millimeters. I did a quick calculation to find the hypotenuse and discovered that the distance from corner to corner of the fitting is just under 30 millimeters, truly tiny. And in elevation, it's just 500 microns. That's the thickness of just six human hairs, or the opening in Gordon's wallet when it comes to ponying up for a Friday night curry at Mastabs. The luminaire is made from hand-milled titanium and is rated at IP67 for outdoor use and is designed to graze walls and stair treads. It features either a 27 degree or 125 degree beam angle and a dimmable output of 94 lumens and comes with a five-year warranty. In eFix news, time is running out to get your nominations in for the eFix awards. January the 31st is the closing day for nominations, so if you've got a nomination in mind, either yourself or someone else, please don't delay. Click the link in the show notes and get your nomination in. We've let Team North loose with the matches again as they investigate the fire-resistant properties of a special SCARMI isolator. And on this week's live stream, we welcome the team from EV charge point maker Zaptec. They're a really fun team, so this is sure to be a really special show. Make sure you subscribed and set a reminder so you won't miss it. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were Boulder Dash and Shuttlecock, and quite frankly, I can't believe that anybody didn't get them. But the first person to get the right answer was Red Snapper, who kicked back against Blue Monday by correctly guessing our challenge words and winning themselves a prize. Click the link in the description below to claim your prize. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with Skarmy. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening and until next time have a great week stay safe out there and remember there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm